Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 and 5 tutorial. So in today's video I'm doing this in Unreal Engine 5, however it does work exactly the same for both engines. So what we're going to be going over and creating today is setting up a 3 point light system. So we're going to be creating something which goes from looking like this to looking like this. So as you can see it's a bit of a subtle difference, we're just making the lighting look a lot better and this is great for portrait shots or product shots, whatever it is that you want to set up and make. This is less for an in-game, more for photography and filming. However, that is again what Unreal Engine is best used for as well as actually creating games. So this is what we're going over and creating today. So if you don't know what three-point lighting is, I will put up a picture on screen now. And as you may guess by the name of it, it essentially uses three different lights to actually create a nice looking scene. So that includes a key light, a fill light, and a backlight. And I'll be going over this a lot more as I'm actually creating it. That's the basic of it, we're using three different lights to create a professionally looking and lit up scene as you can see here, so this is without the lighting, this is with the lighting. And this is also very easy to customise to get it to look a lot better for you and for your own unique product that you're using. So without further ado, let me delete this and show you how I've done it. So what we want to do first is we want to make sure our level is very dark. So as you can see what I've done is I've just very simply got the base project which we have here, the base level selected the floor, hold left alt and dragged up to duplicate it, then just create a roof here. This is all I've done, created a very dark room because as you might be aware, the darker it is to start with, the better the quality of lighting you can actually get using this. Because we want to start with as blank a slate as possible, so I've just gone with a pitch black room so we can actually then build upon it, which we want. I'm gonna leave it as lit instead of unlit up here because I want to actually be able to see what the lighting is doing once we start adding it in. So once we've got our blank canvas, what we want to do is hit Control space to open the content browser, right click, create a blueprint class, and create an actor, naming this three point lighting. Don't worry about the one I've already got, I'm keeping it like that as a reference so I know all the exact values which I want to use. And I'm just gonna put BP at the end of this. So we've got three point lighting BP, and we're gonna open it up straight away. Let me drag this onto the correct monitor, there we go. Now in here, the first thing we're going to add is we're going to add in our product or our model or whatever it is that we want to be lighting up. So if you're doing a product, you'll want to do a static mesh. If you're doing a model, you'll likely want to do a skeletal mesh unless you have it as a static as well. So I'm doing a model, so I'm going to do a skeletal mesh like so, and I will actually name this model. And I'm going to use the skeletal mesh of Quinn Simple, which is just the default character we get in on version 5. And I'm also going to give this a use animation asset under animation mode and make it just be standing in an idle position like this. So this is now what I've got. We're going to compile and save that. So now we've got our model or our product or whatever it is which we're lighting up into our scene. We now also want to obviously light it up. So to do that we're going to go back to add and we're going to be using rectangle lights. So we're going to search for rect light there. We want this one. I'm going to do the key light first, so I'll name it key light, which again is the most prominent and brightest light we have in our scene. And so the location of this, I'm going to have as minus 440 on the X, 325 on the Y, and 230 on the Z. The rotation is going to be 0 on the X, 340 on the Y, and minus 40 on the Z. And now we have something which is over here pointing towards the model. Now we do want to make this more point towards the model again. At the moment it's just a rectangle. So we're going to change the source width to seven and the source height to five, like so. So we have something a bit smaller. And we're gonna change the barn door angle to 25. And you notice that's now done this. So this is obviously the barn door. And the barn door length is going to be 115. So it looks something along these lines now where we can see that's not pointing directly at them, but for me that's going to be fine. You can obviously tweak this as much as you want, it can be in a completely different position and rotation if you wanted, but for me this is going to work perfectly. And I should also mention if you're using Unreal Engine 5 and want to use Lumen, I'd recommend setting it to movable under the mobility here. It should be that by default, but just make sure. Then if we scroll down, under the light we want to go to advanced, scroll down further and we want to change the intensity units from unitless to lumens. So we're going to be using the lumens unit. Scroll back up until we get to intensity and we don't want this to be 25. What I want this to be is 100 lumens. And that is now the intensity which we've got. You can obviously change this to be whatever you want, 
Bigger models need more lighting, small models will need less, and obviously the different materials and colors you've got will require different intensities. So this is where it really comes up to you to customize it. I'm just creating the base values which have worked for me personally. So they're base ones for you too, and just really customize it for your own needs. And that is all I'm gonna change on here. I'm also gonna leave the color as white, as that's gonna work perfectly for me. After this, I'm going to select the key light in the components list up the top left, hit Ctrl C and Ctrl V to duplicate it, as we want to keep a lot of the settings the same. So if we duplicate it, we don't need to do all of that again. I'm then gonna hit F2 to rename it, naming this one the fill light, as that is the next light I want to create. So we'll go back up and do the location and rotation first. Location on the X is 300, Y 325, Z also 230. The rotation is zero on the X, 345 on the Y, so slightly different, and 230 on the Z, like so. So it's now pointing further down like this. So now we've got something along those lines. So next we're gonna change the source width to 40 and the source height also to 40. The angle and length of the barn door we will leave the same as before, so 25 and 115. We've already got the intensity units to lumen, so we just need to change the intensity now from 100. Now the fill light is the second brightest light in your scene and is typically 50 to 75% of your key light. It doesn't have to be that, but that's just a good value to go off of. So my key light is 100, my fill light I'm gonna set to 50, as again, that works perfectly for me personally. And that's all I'm gonna change. So now with the fill light selected, I'm gonna hit Control C, Control V to duplicate it again, hitting F2 to rename it, naming this one the backlight. And this is obviously going to light up the back of the model or product. So the location for me is going to be minus 110, minus 60, and 220 on the X, Y, and Z appropriately. Then the rotation will be zero on the X, 335 on the Y, and 400 on the Z. So it's now pointing back towards the model like so. Now for me, this is quite a high angle and quite low to them. Typically it is a higher angle pointing down like this, so it's not gonna be shown in the camera. Obviously that's not as important in a virtual model like this because you don't actually have a physical model of a light standing there, so you can have it directly in line if you wanted. However, I like to just keep it higher up anyway. And again, I've got it close because for me personally, that's what will look best for my model. However, again, it changes for your own personal needs. The source width, height, and bundle angle and length, I'm gonna leave in the exact same. All I'm gonna change is the intensity. Now the backlight is always the lowest intensity because you obviously don't want a lot of light pointing towards the camera and creating that horrible camera glare which you get. This is really just to light up the back of the model and it really creates a nice outline of them to make them stand out from the rest of the scene which you have. It just creates that crisp outline. So I'm gonna set the intensity of this all the way down to five. So it's really not too bright, but it is there so you can notice the difference with it being there or not and we're gonna compile and save that, and that is now our model and our scene fully set up. The only thing we want to add now is actually our camera. Go to add again, add in a cine camera. Oops, sorry, I didn't select it there. We add in a cine camera, like so. I've accidentally parented it there, so there we go. And all I'm gonna change here is the current aperture to be 22, like so. Everything else, I'm leaving the exact same as default, Obviously, if you know a lot more about camera stuff, you can really change these to get it to look a lot nicer and a lot better once again. So we'll compile and save that. Now, a nice little trick I'm gonna show you to be able to customize this better for your own personal needs is to actually see this in the level to see what your lighting is going to be, so then you can make the appropriate changes. So what we're gonna do is minimize this and place it into our level. So if we hit Control Space and drag it in like so, you can now see this is what it looks like. And also, I've just realized one thing, I had in the camera, but I didn't change where it was, so let me do that now. We'll go back in, camera selected. For me, the position I had it in was 30 on the X, 205 on the Y, 150 on the Z. You typically want to keep it at eye level, if you're doing a model, that is. The rotation was zero on the X, zero on the Y, and minus 95 on the Z. As I didn't want it to be directly head on, I wanted to have a slight angle like this. Compile and save, and that's all I did. So if we minimize it again, you can see in the bottom right hand corner of our screen, we have a nice preview of what this looks like in the level. If we hit this pin, we can deselect it and we still have that there like so. So this is now what it's gonna look like. So we can get up our blueprint again, minimize it slightly like this so we can still mess about with all the values, but also still see what we have down here. Now if we drag this over, what we can do is mess about with these. 
So if we to select the key lights, what I'm going to do is hide them first. So if we hide the key light, it makes that difference. The fill light makes that difference and the backlight makes that difference. So again, it's very subtle, but with all of them together, it makes a very big difference like so. And really here, you can now move them about so you can move where they are, change their rotation and change their intensity just to see what works best for you and what you think is gonna personally be best for your scene and your product and whatever it is which you are setting up and wanting to light up like so. So you might prefer 75 there, you might prefer 50, you might prefer 25. Again, really just customize this to get it perfect for you. What I've done is showing you the base values which I am using, showing you the base positions, rotations, intensity, all that great stuff, and you can now customize it to get it to look how you want. So if we get the key light, we can also change the color of this to maybe be a bit more of a warmer yellowy color. I'm just doing this very, very quickly, and you'll get something which looks like this. Not amazing, but again, that might be just because I've done it very quickly and only done it on one light. Or if you wanted to be, have it a more of a horror theme, you wanted more of a red color, you could do something like this. Again, not amazing with colors when I'm doing it very quickly, but you'll see that adds quite a lot of mood and atmosphere to it, like so, especially if we just set all of them to red. These won't be the exact same color because I've done them differently, but you'll see something along those lines. So it does look a bit better with a bit of white still in there as well, but again, customize this how you want. So I compile and save that like so, and this now works perfectly. Now, if you were doing this for photography or filming and you wanted the camera to be full screen, an easy way to do that is to go up here and open the level blueprint, so this middle icon, open level blueprint, minimize it and select our blueprint in the world, right click on our level blueprint and create a reference to three point lighting BP. Then if we hold down P and left click, we can get event begin play here like so. We can also right click and get player controller. Out of the return value of get player controller, we're going to set view target with blend, connecting that in there like so, with a new view target being our three point lighting BP. And what this is going to do is it's simply just going to make sure our view is going to be the view of this camera. So that is now going to be what we're seeing from and it will be full screen. So we can compile and save that. Sorry if I went through that a bit quickly, this is what you need to do. After this, what I'm also going to do is drag out and execute console command. The console command here is going to be set res, all one word, and all lowercase, then a space, 1920 by 1080, or whatever the resolution of your monitor is for it to be in full screen. And then we can compile and save, minimize, and we can hit play. Another tip here is press the three dots here and go to standalone game, so this is going to be proper full screen and the best lighting possible in engine. And you notice when it starts, it hasn't gone full screen, that would likely just be because I didn't give it enough time. So what we can do is go here, move out, hold down D, left click to get a delay, and we could just put one second in there as we don't need it to be too speedy. And then we'll try this again, making sure we save before we press play. And once this loads up, you will notice we're going to go to the viewport of that camera and it should go full screen as well, as you can see there. Now, if you have kind of red writing up in the top left of your screen, I don't, but if you do, what you can do is press the tilde key, which is just above tab, and then write disable all screen messages. It should appear there. Press tab to fill it in and press enter, and that will then hide them like so. If I just press alt F4, I can come out of here. And something again to improve the lighting is you can go to build, lighting quality, set it to production, then build lighting only. This doesn't make a huge difference in UE5 as you are using Lumen, which is already at the highest quality. But if you're on UE4, pressing build lighting will make a huge difference. So I think that'll be it for this video today as we've gone over everything we've wanted to do. We've set up a three point lighting system inside of Unreal Engine 5, which will also work in 4, in order for us to be able to get photography and cinematography, professional looking lighting for our products, our models, whatever it is that we want to be doing. So sorry if this was a bit of a lengthy video, I just wanted to go over the proper way of setting it up and all the different ways you can customize it for yourself as well. And again, you might think mine doesn't look too great. However, it does look better without lighting. And again, I've done this fairly quickly just to show you how to do it. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.